fight. Day two, um, day two is probably the most depressing day because day two is when you wake up and realize, I haven't just done a little niggle, I can run off, this is actually something, uh, this is actually an injury. I woke up about four times last night and actually bobbins with my ankle and then when I got out of bed this morning, I could barely wait there. So I've done something, yeah, I think we can agree on that, but that's okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk you through how I would deal with this throughout the day. So I sort of, you know, I don't really set aside a lot of time. So I like to build things in while I'm doing something else. And I find I can do a lot more exercise um, using less time. Um, should I be resting? <laughs> It isn't going to happen. The, the battle not to go out for a run this morning was hard enough, even though I could barely walk down the stairs. Yeah, You tell a runner to rest, I'm sorry, it's just not going to happen. You tell a runner not to run, I'm sorry, that isn't going to happen either. Um, I understand that because I do run. And so this is a truly honest account of what I would do. Yeah, I'm not going to stick to the, the guideline books. And you know, people can have their own opinions on that, but this is, this is real life really this is what i'm doing and this is what my runners do and that's why i see so many runners because they get that mentality okay but what i don't want to do is re-injure yeah i'm pissed off because i can't run at the minute but i'm looking towards saturday i did it on tuesday i'm looking towards saturday a small run to test okay um so more i'll do it you know throughout my day so in the morning what am i going to do in the morning eat i haven't used any ice at this point at all yeah i had a hot shower when i got home um and then i've started using a hot water bottle so this morning hobbled downstairs made a cup of tea kids are having breakfast i made myself a hot water bottle and i'm just placing it behind the tendon yeah just on the muscular belly just behind the tendon i'm just keeping it on there five to ten minutes getting up checking on the kids coming back eating food just doing that and I'll do that throughout the day. Yeah, I will, I will heat as much as I sort of can. Um, I found putting the hot water bottle straight on the site, caught that pressure, was eliciting a lot of pain, so I just moved it slightly higher. Okay, so heating throughout the day. Still got my tape on, one now on taping. This, will, this went on yesterday morning. It will come off tomorrow morning, and then I will leave it off for two days, let the skin recover, because I'm imagining this is going to go on a little while now. Take it off two days rest from tape, retape, two days, two days on, two days off at the minute. Okay. Um, when I retape that, maybe when I do my next video, but I'm not going to do one every day because it's all going to be a little bit the same for a while. So that's the morning. Morning, um, just a bit of heat uh, and just trying, <laughs> trying to walk, yeah, which is interesting. Um, so then throughout the day, what am I going to do? So at the minute, a single leg calf face is just an absolute non-starter. Um, I cannot wait there on my left uh, ankle at all. Yeah, I can't lift up on that. It just even thinking about it makes it hurt. But I can do a double leg, yeah? So what I'll be doing is while I'm in between appointments when I'm making cups of tea, I drink a lot of tea when I'm making cups of tea, yeah? What I'll be doing is both legs, and I'm just going to be doing calf raises, double leg calf raises, because it doesn't really hurt. As I come up, as I come up to the top, there's a twinge, yeah? So I will come down, and I will work just to the cusp of that twinge. So I'm not pushing it into any kind of pain. I'm working the range of movement I have at the minute. And I'm, so that's where the pain is. I'm coming up to it, just touching it, and then down. Yeah, just touching it and down. And there's no set amount of what I'm going to do. I'm, I may be six, yeah. I'm going to do it, and this minute it starts to feel slightly uncomfortable, I'm just going to stop, okay? Because I'm going to be able to do these multiple times, just doing five, yeah, in a comfortable range, keeping that movement I've still got. I've, I'll do that regularly throughout. What I'll try and do two or three times, maybe, is go to a step, okay? So I can I can do this in between appointments because I've got a little block. Yeah, so there's my little block. So rather than, so initially I'm just doing these, you know, that's painful, so that's 
on the cusp so that's what I'll be working both legs and then what I can do is go into a step and do the same thing but now with a bit of a heel drop so now I've got a bit of an active stretch but again I'm only working what's comfortable if I drop too far it elicits pain straight up the back of the tendon and I don't want that I just want to just touch that pain just to, so there that's a reasonable comfortable area and I'm just going to do a few of these See now that is just starting to ache a bit, so I'll back off and I'll stop. Yeah, I'm not pushing to pain. I'm not trying to re-rupture. I'm trying to keep the movement going, keep this, keep just some strength there. And what you'll find is that range will open up. So the next few days, that range is going to open up. I'm not thinking single leg at the minute at all. I'm just building on that. Okay. So I've been doing a fair amount of that periodically throughout the day okay and then what's going to happen on an evening is I'm going to get out my roller and spiky ball okay so you know I've got a mate coming around for dinner tonight so when we're chatting this is what I'll be doing yeah it's just time I will be sat on the sofa talking to him but instead I'll just be sat on the floor and have the roller just Above, I don't want to roll on the pain. I don't want it on anything, you know, down here. Where the red tape is really, that's all very, very sensitive at the minute. So you see, I'm just above it. I'm going to point the toes away. Just give it a little bit of a body weight, a bit of a lock, and then just lift the foot. Relax off, lock it, lift the foot. Bring it up a bit, lock it. There's a full calf release video but this is kind of what I'll be doing. It's a little bit quicker. Just moving the angle of the foot, left and right, locking it off and stretching it off. Sometimes I like to sort of roll through and lift at the same time. So I'm getting a bit of, I'm using the roller to, to roll as it's designed and as a soft tissue release. So I'm lifting the foot, rolling through. And when I've done, you know, I'll probably work about halfway and then I'll switch it to the spiky ball. And I'll do a bit of spiky ball work in the same manner, working around. Anything tender, I'll probably just hang out on it, work it a little bit, get rid of that tender point and work somewhere else. Just soft enough the, the tissue to stop any pull on the tendon. When I've done that, I'll probably get a band, wrap it around my foot, and then just so now as I push out, there hurts. So I'm off. I'm just off the pain. And I'll just hold it there. Just hold it there for about 10 seconds. Let it come back. Push. That's painful. Back off a bit. And I'll hold it there. And I'll do a few of these. What am I doing? What I'm doing this pain, you know, when you get to the pain, when the tissue ruptures, yeah, the, the, the fibres come apart and then when they heal up, they, they don't heal up straight, they sort of crisscross. And what I don't want is some kind of knotted scarring, which is going to shorten my tendons. So by just going to the pain, just lengthening those tendons, those, those fibres a little bit, lengthening them. But what I don't want to do is push into the pain and re-rupture, yeah, and then be back to day one. That's the, the risk we have, is re-rupturing. So we're working the comfortable range of movement, just touching the cusp of the pain back and forth. And then, you know, I'm just gonna do some of this, you know, I'm watching TV now, just chilling out. And I'll just circle my foot, and then you can sort of get your hands, and it's almost like you're kind of strangling down your foot. It's, you know, you can't really manipulate your own foot, but I was doing this this morning, and it was clicking and cracking all over the place. Change of position and just so there you go, little clicks and cracks, which are fine. But all we're doing is we're just articulating the bones against each other, getting the synovial fluid moving between them, and just trying to keep the ankle nice and loose. And that's how it's going to go for a few days now. I'm afraid there's not, not a lot else I can do. Um, so just heat, uh, move in the console, load it. 
and work it in a comfortable range. Release it with a roller and a ball and then just do a little bit of strengthening exercise with a band. That would be me uh, until I retape and then I'll reassess and then I'll see if I can... Oh, the last thing actually, there's one more thing I'm going to be doing. So it, I did all my glute exercise last night and my hips were pretty good so I was quite happy with that. You remember the band. So the last thing I'm going to do now is again throughout the day, every now and then, just on my injured leg, push my heel in the floor, lock my knees, squeeze my glutes and then just stand on one leg. Okay. It's great for the ankle. So I'm just toe down, heel down, lock my knees, squeeze my glute, lift my leg and then just hold. I'll feel it in the calf initially, then you start to feel it in the hip. And then what I can do is start, if I move my leg out, I'm changing the centre of gravity and I'm putting different stresses on the ankle and the hip. So if I come out to there, that hurt quite a bit, so I've eased up a bit and then I can hold and try and stabilise in that position. So I'm rebuilding the, the proprioceptors in the ankle. I'm re setting the, uh, I'm strengthening the glute. I'm getting the glute used to now holding the ankle in slightly different centres of gravity and positions, but low level, firing up the calf complex. By pushing the heel in, and I should push the heel and the big toe, I'll reinforce my medial arch of my foot, so I'll get that arch secure. And then I'm just um, starting to get the ankle working again. And then hopefully, get back out running sooner rather than later uh, so like I said that's gonna go on for a few days so I'm not going to do the video of that every day because it would be boring but I'll probably come back in a few days if anything changes and then if I've changed what I'm doing I'll post a new video and you'll see how we're getting on okay